Okay, very good. So four people are already uh, joined this session. Five, very good. Go on, go on. See, we can do as so easily we can i think communicate and if you can ask me questions and i can give you the answers okay you don't have to install any softwares or you don't have to install any anything else okay and whatever your questions you can uh, Ask me, I think, in this, uh, in the comment. Okay. So, shall we start? Only about four people are there. You can write the comment on the uh, right side. Okay, right side. Uh, look at Ali Pokla. She uh, already written a comment. So that way we can communicate. Just let me know so we can, you know, continue uh, taking the live lecture. So th this would be best, in fact, for everyone. Say something in the comment, so I'll get to know. And also let me know whether I am audible or not. <coughs> if you respond, then only I can proceed. Has responded me. Now, why only four people? Rest of the people they don't have internet or what? Okay, Hemant also he responded. Niang responded very good. Okay, sorry, very good. Okay, good, good. The number is increasing, very good. I'm just waiting a few more minutes and then I'll continue. Is it okay?
Okay, very good, very good. Amit is there. The boss with the very good. Shall we start? What do you say? So let's start about the South Indian Neolithic. Okay, very good. So let us continue. Okay, and let us start. So let us talk about South India. So I think for you, also I need to tell you probably one of the states that is coming under the South India that is the Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. These are the states considered as south india okay the second is when you come to the neolithic okay the south indian neolithic is a typical characteristic okay that we need to understand first and why it is different because it has a different dates it has a different cultural setup obviously it has different landscapes okay so the south indian neolithic is very well known because of its character and what the character that is the as found first and the second is like these are the neolithic settlement those are basically pastoral community okay mostly they are dependent on agriculture and also pastoralism okay and the sites are they are located on the a hillock area okay small hillocks are there and then they are occupying the uh, granite hills mostly these are the granite hill and they are they they had their they had their habitation sites okay so if you go to the history of the neolithic research in uh, south india it was first uh treated by medio steller he was a british archaeology and it was at a place called lingasur in raisur district of karnataka okay so it was quite early in 1845 only he started working for the uh, neolithic remains of the uh, raichur district okay and later on the work was continued by robert bosford and he published a monograph on it okay and the monograph is published by the chennai museum now what is also important here is that the later on the work was continued by whom it was continued by mortimer wheeler okay and there are quite a large number of sites are there those are very important okay and we also need to understand them properly so during 1960s and 70s there a large number of sites were uh, explored and excavated and majority of these sites are located in karnataka 
and few of these sites they are located in andhra pradesh and tamil nadu okay so important is these are in kuggal uh, sorry and kuggal in ballari district of karnataka okay then another site that is pikli hall uh, another site pikli hall maski these are the two sites uh, in raichur district hallur in dharwad district hemis in mysore and terdal in bijapur district okay and there is another side there is the uh, godekal uh, kodekal in gulbarga district so these are the important excavated sites in karnataka only okay then let us come to the andhra pradesh so in andhra pradesh the important sites are utnur in mehbubnagar district nagarjun konda in guntur uh, district okay in palave in anandpur okay and singanpalli in karnool district so these are the sites that is there in andhra pradesh the next come to payyampalli okay uh, sorry the uh, tamil nadu and the sites uh, name of the sites is payyampalli it is located in the uh, north arcot district of tamil nadu okay so these sites are there discovered in the river valleys of godavari krishna and tungabhadra okay as well as also on the bank of the river kaveri fine so what uh, this uh, south indian neolithic people they did about their uh, agriculture or the like you know, the domestication is mostly look at here the people the neolithic uh, people of south india were there well aware about the uh, particularly the cattle keeping okay and also they are about the what agriculture so the evidence of uh, agriculture is coming from that is a uh, two site tekalkota and piyampalli so there uh, the cultivation of gram and moong and ragi is also known okay uh, apart from cultivation uh, they are also doing the pastoralism and sheep goat cattle buffalo and pigs were also domesticated in uh, the neolithic culture of south india then best is also what about the s mount sites okay so i already told you uh, in the last lecture about the s mount sites okay i'll tell you in details but let us now let uh, know about uh, what is the basic chronology of the neolithic culture of south india so the chronology of the south indian neolithic age that is the first phase is from something about 2900 to till about 2000 bc okay so there are different phases are there the south indian neolithic has been divided into three phases okay the first phase can be from the 2900 to 2000 and the next phase that can be from 2000 to 1400 bc and the third phase can be from 1400 bc to 1000 bc so roughly what the dates we are finding here the dates is that is 3000 bc to about 1000 bc okay so this is the time period when the neolithic uh, rise up in the hilly areas of or the pedim hilly and uh, pedimented areas of south india and then they continued till about 1000 bc and what happened after 1000 bc is after 1000 bc the chalcolithic culture started in different parts of the deccan okay and that's how they become the early farming communities or become the uh, the the advanced agro pastoral community of the new the south india okay so now what do we find in the case of the early phase of uh, neolithic age utnur kodekal brahmagiri okay these are uh, the sites which has uh, very well established stratigraphical uh sequence of the early mature and near uh, early and mature actually like the late phase of neolithic culture okay so these settlements are there mostly 
uh, located on the low lying granite hill surrounded by a vast stretch of fertile black soil okay the black soil is keep in mind that is part of because of the deccan dark okay so whenever the black soil you see that is because happen because of the weathering and it's also suggest what the fertility okay so it's more fertile in nature so then let us also let to know about the settlement sites of the uh, sites okay so for example like you now the size of the utmur is measured about 180 by 180 meter this is the size of the settlement but if you look at this uh, size of uh, sites like budhial which is a, a small site so it was a vast it, it, it spread over about 2 to 3 kilometers 2 uh, to 3 square kilometer so that means it was very vast so that's why it was considered as probably could be a regional center for the asmount sites okay that i i'll tell you details about the asmount sites okay again now also we need to know what kind of pottery were found in the case of the neolithic culture of south india so the pottery are both they are handmade and also they are come in the wheel made in the later phases okay but what is important here is that the handmade pottery are there uh, in the both coarse in nature as well as have the fine fabric okay so what they used to do for the making the pottery is they are using the locally available clay and they also used to mix mica and some gritty substance which like a used uh the pottery more glazy okay means when you put the mica it's obviously i give you some shining okay uh, i'll send you the pdf okay there are some pictures in this um, presentation so you'll go through it and then you can have a look about the different type of pottery that is found in the neolithic culture of south india okay and what is also one one more important thing about the neolithic culture of south india is the the neolithic axes and the neolithic blades so in any other parts of india you don't find the charred blades in neolithic culture if they are found also they are very rare but in case of the south indian neolithic is very common okay so the large charred blades and then the microlithic tool they are continue in also the neolithic time period okay so they are also using the ground stone tool they are the ground uh, polish axes but same time they are also using the charred blades and then when you talk about the neolithic uh, axes so keep in mind they are using the locally available raw material okay and what is the raw material used that is the dolerite dike so in case of what also you see uh, in uh, the garo hill so in the garo hill also we have seen that most of the neolithic uh, are there made on what made on dolerite okay and then if you go to the assam like where like you know the earliest neolithic uh, evidences are also recovered uh, from the uh, the upper assam region okay the dibrugarh region uh, so there the neolithic axes are found in jet okay jet or jet jet light okay and then what kind of materials are they used for making the uh, the blades they use the crypto crystalline siliceous material okay so now we need to understand what is siliceous material or what is silica so you everyone of you know what is silica right silica means the glass okay that is 100% silica and in the case of the siliceous rock so the percentage of the silica content in the stones could be up to about 70% okay so in that case whenever you break the stone 
you give it's give you better sharp edges okay then what kind of stone tools are found that is basically the blades back blades scraper and points which are the tools that we recover from the south indian neolithic sites and they use for what they use for probably hunting or fishing purpose or probably also for using their day to day needs beside this also we find the presence of quern and muller so what does the quern and muller uh, the use of quern and muller they used to use for grinding the cereal okay so there are some uh, pictures i'll uh, share with you so there is some pictures from hiregoda site so hiregoda is one of the uh, neolithic uh, axe manufacturing site so the site has been studied very well uh, and properly so there you'll see some uh, neolithic axes as well as the neolithic deposits and also what they they have done is they have uh, used the outcrops for grinding the neolithic axes so you will find lot of the x polishing mark on the surface okay that i'll share with you okay in few moments so have you know uh, have you heard about the site uh, mismagri any of uh, all of you i hope just you know about the mismagri site so mismagri site also have this similar nature so once if you get the opportunity we will go for uh, finding the sites i'm just like to visit the sites uh, but beside this uh, also we will make a field trip to there is another site which is located close to our campus uh, there is a site called edenwari okay edenwari is very close to our campus somewhere in, uh, i think maybe about 5 km or about 10 km so easily you can go and then i'll show you there that is also one of the neolithic x manufacturing site uh, i discovered this site actually uh, when i was there in 2015 and it has not been known uh, properly so what we can do is we'll go there and we'll see this site properly and thus i will also get to know how a neolithic manufacturing site looks like okay so what they have done in that case is they have used the uh, dolerite dike and then they on the spot only they have manufactured uh, hundreds and thousands of neolithic axes so in the neolithic manufacturing sites what you find is you find mostly the unfinished tool okay you find unfinished tool and large number of debris are found in the neolithic manufacturing sites okay large number of debris will be there okay waste material when when you go to any industrial site you do find large number of what wastage okay so in an industrial site what you find you find the finished tool you find uh, the both uh, the semi finished one you find the waste product the same way also when you go to a manufacturing site uh, in the neolithic also you do find all the different stages of a neolithic reduction sequence okay or you do find the different stages of making a axis okay so the hiregoda site i was just talking about so hiregoda uh, it's a site in karnataka only so the site has been dated to about 1400 to 1300 bc and then it was jointly worked by team from uk and uh, from the darwar university and then then they you know did a very good work and they called this project as a project muse okay there is a special uh, paper has also been published on this if you are interested i can share the paper with you but it would be complicated for you so better i think don't go into much much of the complicated uh, paper for right now okay so let us also talk little bit about the boreal practices so what kind of boreal practices have 
seen in the south indian neolith so what they used to do after the death they used to bury the dead either inside the their houses okay inside the hut uh, huts or below the floor okay wherever they are used to stay there they used to bury the dead body just below it so there is a belief system associated with this and then because of the uh, culture it's not only in south india the same thing can be also seen in the uh, eastern india you can see the same thing also in the northwest india so the neolithic people they believe that the spirit will going to stay with them okay so that's how they are sorry so that's how that's why they are burying the death just the places where they are habitating okay unfortunately we don't have any evidences uh, so far in the northeast india uh, because uh, the because of the humid climate uh, is probably doesn't survive okay the light is coming here yeah. and then they are mostly they they are the, this is called the peat burial or the on burial so what do you find in the peat burial like they used to uh, excavate a peat and then they are putting the dead body in the peat so that is called the peat burial okay and also they used to uh, bury the infant okay when the child used to die they used to put in a pot okay or in a on, on and they again they are putting it just below their the floor where they used to uh, habit it okay so at tekal kota there is one burial uh, was found and it's uh, of a adult uh, male and there what we find 1.6 uh, meter long the pit, i'm telling about the size of the pit okay that is 1.6 meter and centimeter so easily a dead body can be put it uh, put it inside the uh, pit and then they used to bury it okay so this is just um, about uh, briefly about the south indian neolithic today okay so next lecture we'll talk about the budhial site okay so this was just a test uh, for all of you uh, i hope it is working uh, with all of you and if this is continue and this is success then we can um, continue uh, taking more lectures on the youtube live uh, that's it for today thank you everyone if you have any questions uh, please let me so i love to answer all of you okay i'm giving you a few minutes for answer okay ask me question now so eight students are there i can see okay i don't know what happened to others but uh, at least eight is uh, online and they are watching me because the numbers come here you type the questions in the uh, comment box and then i'll respond to you any questions anything you want to ask i'm happy that it's working with at least few students no questions should i end the session here okay thank you